And welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now talking about a very important issue that has shaped Nigeria in the past few months, and it's the NSAS protest. On October 20th, 2020, a series of events occurred that is still you know, shrouded in a bit of mystery because of the uncertainty as to what occurred that day due to lack of evidence until now. So an NSAS protester who was there on that night on October 20th, 2020, has released video evidence of what happened on that day, uh, presented to the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry into you know, abuses by the police and uh, SARS operatives. Um, she joins us now this morning. Her name is Sarah Ibrahim. Uh, good morning, Sarah. Hi, good morning. Thanks for being here. Could you walk us through... What happened on that day of October 20th, 2020, from when you arrived at the Lekki toll gates to when you left? What transpired in those hours? Well, it started as a normal protest because um, what we do as part of the coordinators was that we ensure that everything is put in place. We ensure that the barricades are put in place. We ensure that there is food. We ensure that the protesters are standing in the right place. We ensure that the volunteer security is there. So we just started like a um, normal routine until about 12, 11 a.m. when we got information about a coffee for 4 o'clock. And then what we started doing was we started making sure that everybody is in a particular position because we definitely knew that the coffee was actually to with the protesters because mm. so there was no other there was no and the soldiers coming to the electric toll gate there was no reason for it at all to this very day the soldiers have not given a defined objective of why they were actually at the toll gate they've not actually said why they've not given any reason because they've been going back and forth i mean we we're there we're peaceful we're waving our flags we bought, we brought a lot of flags because so every day at the protest ground we share flags. Like that is one thing that we share: flags and sanitizers. They are always in they are always in essence. We share flags and everyone sit down while we discuss, we talk, and then the coffee was actually moved. The coffee was moved, and the Lagos State announced that okay, coffee has been moved, and everybody was there, you know, doing our normal protest activities, making sure that our voices are heard criminal stars and, and police brutality. I mean, we had a lot of children from that their parents are police, that are in the police force there, coming to talk about how they don't actually have a good life, how they can go to good schools. We're just doing our normal protest activities. And then we're actually shocked and surprised when we started hearing gunshots from way apart from Stanfield. Stanfield is like far, very, very far from where the protest ground is. They started shooting from that point just to chase protesters and disperse them and also kill people. And they kept shooting, kept shooting until they got to the protest ground. There was no altercation. There was no, oh, okay, um, you guys have to leave this place right now. We got that information about something. Nothing. Nobody came to tell us to leave. Nobody came to talk to us. Just came and started shooting. I mean, they didn't bring water cannons. They didn't bring tasers. They didn't bring tear gas, just live bullets, killing people. And it's actually very, very wrong and very, very unfair that the Lagos State government keeps denying that they don't have anything to do with this. I mean, oh, someone oh. comes to your constituency and kept shooting for over four or five hours, and you didn't show up, and you didn't come out, and then you came out way, way earlier in the morning, and then you're trying to say, oh, okay, out, and they know about it. And so just kept insisting that they were called by the Lagos State government. So it's like a back and forth. Okay, and so Sarah, Sarah, basically you're saying you went to the protest grounds as usual, and then around 4 p.m., a curfew was declared, and then you had the shooting, and this was after, you know, they had turned off the lights at the Lekki toll gate, right? Yes, yeah, the LCC turned off the lights. Meanwhile, there was lights in their office. They left the lights in their office on. But they put up the lights for the protesters were standing. Put up the street lights, put up the billboard lights, and the sad media put up the billboard lights. They put up all the lights. Oh. Just, so, and the army, and the funny thing is that the army didn't come to shoot where the protesters were standing. They waited until the lights were off. 
All right, so quickly, so quickly going respond. Around, going around. Um, I, I want to talk because, you know, the you know, major part of this um, conversation now is because of the argument about uh, whether people were killed or not, whether the army used live bullets or not, whether people were injured or not. Uh, there have been people who say, oh, where are the bodies um, of those who, you know, they claim were killed? Also, quickly respond to, you know, uh, the videos that you were able to capture that day, if any, and um, how all that played out. Did you see anyone shot? Did you see anyone killed? Uh, did you, uh, you know, go, go to the hospital with, with anybody? Yeah, first of all, the army kept denying that it came with live bullets. They denied and denied until during a cross-examination panel when one of the, the lawyers for the youth actually made him say that, okay, we brought live bullets. They kept denying. I mean, we have, we took people to a hospital. Grandville, uh, Grandville um, Hospital treated 15 protesters with gunshot injury alone. Reddington in VI treated 16 people, two were amputated. In Granville, one was amputated. The other person that was supposed to be amputated was actually referred to lose for last week. We had people who died in hospital. We had people we saw who died on the floor right there. And the bodies were carried. Okay, we are taking them to help you treat them. And then protesters were just dropping the bodies. So take them, which have been showed in the videos that were played in the panel. So it was showed like there were dead people right there in front. Blood gushing from their heads. Blood, blood gushing from their eyes, from their faces. So, where are the bodies? That's the question. That that's the, that's what we want to know. Because we saw you. You came. You shot. You killed. And then you carried the body. And now there are videos of families coming out saying that, okay, this is the picture of my son, dead at the toll gate. Obviously, let me give him a bit of a and burial. Where is my son? Why can't I have my child? There are people who are still, their families who are still looking for victims. Hmm. Their families are still looking for, for, for their children. And then they, they're making, they're, they're coming out and they're asking, okay, I'm looking for my son. But they don't want you to go, they don't, because most of them will tell you, I don't want problem with the government. So you can imagine in a country where the citizens are actually, the government actually scares them to the point of, okay, I don't want to die. That's the kind of monstrous and devilish people we have in power. Sarah, do you think Sarah, do you think this has anything to do with uh, memos sent to hospitals and um, by hospitals to their staff, like last week, you know, instructing staff not to grant any interview and say anything about, you know, the bodies potentially brought into the hospitals? Yeah, of course it has a lot to do with it. I mean, and it was clearly written in the memo that. We don't. We do not want to embarrass the government. Oh, yeah. Somehow, like because we even have one person who died in last that we know about, that we've met the family that we know about. So imagine the ones that we don't know about. All right. Um, can you also confirm uh, the video clips and the pictures that were taken of these victims and these people who um, died or were in the hospital? Were they made by you or somebody else? They were made by a group of people. I mean, as coordinators, what we had to do in the process round was to ensure that everything goes well. So, like every five, ten minutes, we're making videos about this, we're making videos about that. So, so basically, from a whole lot of people around and a whole lot of the coordinators too, and we are proving it in court that these videos are not doctored, as stated by one of the army officers that he did his investigation and found that it's a Photoshop. I'm still waiting for the people who did that investigation to come out and tell us, okay, it's a Photoshop. But we displayed in the panel showing the Google metadata, which we showed the, the metadata, we showed the panel, we showed the location, we, we've proven that already. So we're past that stage. I mean, it's actually funny that when it comes to the lives of citizens, they're actually making us to come and prove beyond reasonable doubt. When you know that it happened, when there were live videos, people were on live on Instagram, people were on live on Facebook, showing this, showing what was going on that day. So everything has been, it has been proven. All we just want, we just want answers to where the bodies are kept. Sarah, who, who, who's, who's saying it? it was photoshopped? Was this at the, um, the judicial panel? Um, it was one of the, the army officers when he gave his interview, when he kept saying that the army was never present at Sogi. Um, Eneche John, General Eneche John, that's his name. All right. All right. Uh, so, yes, I wanted to ask you, um, 
lots of people have been saying, you know, if this is true, the videos and pictures we're seeing is true, why, why did the people who had the videos, you know, had to wait this long before putting it out? You need to understand that a whole lot of these people are out of their homes. A whole of them are in safe houses. A whole of them are out of, they, they can't go to work. The government kept going to people's houses and dragging people out. And it was so dark. It was so dark that whatever picture or video you're taking, you, you can't even see it, except maybe somebody's touch light was put on. And the army was so deadly that day that once they see a blink of light anywhere, they shoot directly to that place. So if you notice, most people that even got shot, got shot on their arms and on their shoulders, so like they were taking pictures. A whole lot of them got direct shot to their head. A whole lot of them direct shot to their head. How much do you think this um, um, affects the panel, you know, and of course uh, the testimonies at the panel? Uh, do you think that the videos uh, that you, of course, um, have put out will change anything and change the narrative, you know, at the panel? I think the panel has a whole lot of on its shoulders because every government agency has actually tried to dismiss the Lekki massacre because they, they know it happened. They just, don't, they just don't want it to come out. I mean, the panel has a whole lot of responsibility to actually come out and say this happened and this is what we want to do. But the panel can go as far as only making recommendations and they're going to make recommendations to the governor. And this same governor is the person that we okay that we we know that is actually part of this too. So it's like you're coming to tell the, the, the suspect and the one who is guilty that okay here this is what you are supposed to do to yourself. And I don't think it's I don't think it's to make sense because that that's all the panel could do actually make recommendations, but they can actually do their possible best job to see that the justice is served and the truth is actually out. Okay. Because honestly, everything that is actually going on now looks like people who died at, at, at the Lake East are not going to get us. Because they're obviously putting up their lives. They didn't even release the footage of the camera to people who were asked to go and do forensics. They, they refused. They didn't release the, the footage to them. They didn't even bring all the footage of all the camera present at the toll gate. And they're currently renovating the toll gate, thinking they're going to go back to business. So does it look like they, that, that people who got killed and people who got shot can actually get just? Does it look like that to you? Hmm. Um, Sarah, uh, there's a very important aspect of this whole situation regarding the NSAS protest. We know how this started out, you know, videos and pictures surfacing online about how, you know, SARS operatives allegedly shot at, you know, just one boy in Delta State and how, you know, this went viral. People started to share stories of how SARS operatives had, you know, attacked them, harassed them, even killed people. That's basically how this started out as a movement to protest the high handedness of SARS operatives. But this factor of the protest being hijacked by political thugs, hoodlums, how do you think this really affected the image of the protest and, you know, what they were trying to advocate for? Let me correct you on that. The end SARS protest was never a gap. It was never attacked. The entire protest was attacked. It was hmm. attacked by the government. It was attacked by the Nigerian police. It was attacked by the Nigerian army. It was attacked by the federal government. It was attacked, not attacked. Because every hoodlum, every talk that was actually present at different protest grounds were seen coming down from government sponsored SUVs. From SUVs. There are videos, evidences. So the entire protest was, it was not a gap. It was a trap. And it's funny because people are coming out to actually ask the government. We didn't ask for food. We didn't ask for water. We didn't tell them to give us money. Just our basic human rights allow us to leave and stop killing us. Stop the brutality. Stop it. That was all we came to ask for. And then they came to shut us down. Because the government states when the people speak up. And that is one thing we need to understand, that we have the right to speak up, we have the right for our voices to be heard. We can't keep cowering down as the people. We cannot, because they are public servants to serve us. Hmm. So if we are coming out today, end the police brutality, you should listen to us. 
we're not telling you to give us money. We're not telling you to give us water. We're not telling you to give us electricity. I think, I think we're asking you yeah. for the most basic human right, the right to live. Well, I think so the, I think the message uh, uh, the message has been clear from the um, uh, protest. Uh, even if yes, there were uh, people who tried to change the narrative, but you know, I, I I still want us to focus on you know why we're having this conversation, and that is um, ways to prove that people actually were injured and were killed. Uh, the government has you know denied that um, over and over that anybody lost their lives. The Lagos State government admitted at some point. Um, but, you know, it, 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 I, I want you, you, know, you to share with us, you know, before we go, um, an on-ground um, view of what exactly you saw, um, the people who were shot, um, who took them away? Did you, you know, join anyone, of course, who brought some of these bodies to the hospital? Uh, did you, in any, you know, take part in any of that? Yes, yeah, so personally, we took people to the hospital. In, when the army left, they're trying to take people, put them in private cars of protesters. Because the army turned back the ambulances. They turned them back. So that's to prove to you that they didn't even they didn't even want us to be safe. They turned back the ambulances. That's even against the international humanitarian rule. That's that alone should actually even shut down the Nigerian army, take some people take some people to court, take some people to jail for life. So we were there, we helped people to hospital. I'm giving you a view already of over 15 people taken to Grandville. 15, 15 people taken to Grandville Hospital. Some of them were referred out. There were over 32 protesters in Reddington Lecky alone. People were being treated at the car park of Reddington. People were being treated on the floor. Videos which I've already played and showed already to show you how, how many there, there were. I had a friend at Lagos Island was about to undergo an appendix process and the, the doctors had to leave him because they were overwhelmed with the amount of gunshot injury victims that were present that day. He just reached out to me and he was like, you know, I was in the hospital and he sent me videos of people trooping in and the cleaner was even complaining that they had no mops anymore because all the mops were filled with blood. Wow. They were cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. Hospitals are overwhelmed. Over 22 hospitals in Lagos. He said victims from the Lake Massacre. So, Sarah, Sarah, if, if you say that, uh, if you claim that the government directly attacked the NSAS protest, even with this footage that seems to, you know, have evidence, what sort of, you know, judgments or justice would you be expecting from that same government that you say was responsible? They could, they could have just told us the truth from the onset. Who ordered the shooting? Who ordered the massacre? Where are the bodies? Where are they? Come on, you have to bring you have to bring out these bodies. Let let, let, let families go bury their children. I played videos of mothers crying and asking, okay, this is my son. I mean, this is the video of him at the toll gate, but I've not seen him since. I've spent all my money going to hospital. You cannot see videos of mothers crying and you would not be moved. So that is the kind of heartless government that we have. Heartless. All right, sir. This is just a basic, this is a basic shite killing situation. Kill, take the bodies and go bury. And, and I think that is what the, the army, that, that they, should be, they should be ashamed of themselves. Wow. They have a lot of shame more than the government itself. All right, Sarah, um, we wish we had more time to discuss this, but really, this seems like an ongoing conversation. Well, thank you very much for coming on The Breakfast this morning to discuss this with us. Have a great day. All right, thank you for having me. Have a great day. Wow. Yeah, That's a lot to, to swallow. Absolutely. Stay with us. Uh, we'll be back after the short break. Uh, there's more conversations here on The Breakfast. We're moving into talking about electricity now, the collapse of the national grid, and uh, what this means. Uh, where do we go from here? Stay with us here on Plus TV Africa.